Okay, this video is personal defense systems. And where this comes from is, you know, I had notes in some book that I read and the books, I, I wasn't even that interested in this book. I read this book about the immune system and the allergy system. And I just had a note in there about human defense systems, which I got me motivated to make this video. I think there's a couple useful points in it. So the first one is our liver. The liver is basically the immune system for chemicals, for toxins. The liver is the main spot in our body by far that detoxifies toxic chemicals. The liver is really big. If you look at a CAT scan in the abdomen, you'll see that it's it's about a fourth of the entire abdomen. It's, it's giant. Um, and so, you know, what do I see? The majority of uh, middle-aged and older people I see have fatty livers, which is basically diabetes of the liver from excessive uh, amounts of fat in the diet and from excessive amounts of high fructose corn syrup like in processed food. So that's the main thing damaging the liver, and that can progress to uh, inflammation, you know, NASH, non-alcohol, steatohepatitis. Usually you hear fatty liver described as NAFL, non-alcohol fatty liver. Um, you can, of course, get fatty liver from alcohol as well. Um, and that can progress to cirrhosis, can progress to liver transplant. But, you know, you don't want anything damaging your liver. Your liver is really important. There are some toxins, relatively uncommon for those to cause a significant problem, but they can. Tylenol, rooibos tea, things like that. Okay, the immune system. The immune system is what protects you from infections. It's also what protects you from cancer. And the main inhibitors of the immune system are psychological stress. Uh, being sleep deprived is about the same thing as psychological stress. Caffeine raises the same hormones as stress and sleep deprivation. Increased cortisol, increased catecholamines. Catecholamines are norepinephrine and epinephrine. Norepi epi is the same thing as adrenaline and noradrenaline. Okay, MSG. I just did a book report like uh, yesterday on a book um, showing that uh, when a person is exposed to it, well, it was a, the paper was about rabbits, but there were a whole bunch of other studies, including about humans, showing that um, high intakes of MSG, MFG, glutamate will cause increased amounts of cortisol, which concerned me because it can be like a vicious cycle, and that's an immune suppressant because you, you don't need your immune system when you're just trying to survive the next 30 minutes being chased by a tiger in the dark. Okay, high fat diets, they suppress the immune system. I went through the papers on that. That lady, Lydia Lynch, formerly from Harvard, now she's going to Princeton, had written all about how high-fat diets suppress the immune system, suppress immune function. Omega-3 fats also suppress immune function. That's another reason why I think they're a bad idea. They increase the risk of prostate cancer, obesity, uh, diabetes. I wouldn't take them. I think the whole thing, uh, promoting them is a joke. Okay, um, just being fat, that'll lead to increased blood lipids, and that suppresses the immune system as well. F-, minus. Um, I just went through a, a paper on that showing that it suppresses the immune system in numerous ways. It's really bad. It's a, it's a generalized toxin. Okay, what improves the immune system? Well, you know, basically doing the opposite of the bad stuff. Get your sleep. When you sleep, you increase your melatonin and oxytocin. Those are the opposite side of the seesaw. They go up when cortisol goes down. They're the good guys. Melatonin for sleep especially, um, also for antioxidant properties, and oxytocin for love, feeling of safety, friendship, and all that. Exercise is important to get the immune system to work well because it gets your lymphatic fluid to flow around the body. There is no heart connected to the lymphatics. It's a parallel system of vessels to the arteries and veins, and it needs you to exercise to get the things moving. When you exercise, you increase flow in the immune system, lymphatics, by about 10 to 30 fold. Makes a big difference. Um, having a sense of purpose and religion, like, you know, being stoic, you know, and Christian, it calms you down, and that lowers your cortisol level, and that improves your immune function. Okay, um, autonomic nervous system. So that basically has two opposites. It's got SANS and PAN. SANS is sympathetic autonomic nervous system. That's fight or flight. It's the accelerator. Uh, PANS is the opposite. It's the break. Uh, PANS is when things are good, things are cool, plenty of food available, things are safe. You can feed and breed, rest and digest. It's for the maintenance functions of the body to sort of rebuild itself, to heal itself, to recuperate. Versus SANS, you know, fight or flight is to protect us from physical threats, um, and you maintain it strong, of course, by exercising, resting, eating a healthy diet. You know, like anything in the body, it does better with the appropriate diet and sleep and whatnot. Okay, the next thing is personal energy. And I mentioned this personal energy concept because I see lots of people that have high IQs or whatever equivalent IQs, and some of them do well and some don't. Uh, some of the variables I see that help us to do well um, is to have a good personal philosophy, you know, you need some social skills because you got to get along with people. If you don't get along with people, you'll be ostracized from society. People, you know, will not give you the benefit of the doubt. So you got to develop social skills. And that comes with experience, but also being aware that it's important and making an effort to develop them and having some friends and older people you can talk to and getting advice from them. And if you need to, read some books about it. I actually read a bunch of books about it and it helped me. 
Um, next thing is survival skills. A lot of people I've seen have their lives ruined because they're too trusting. I would actually say the average person is way too trusting. You know, for example, uh, they overtrust all kinds of institutions, thinking these institutions are there to help them, when the institutions are just there to make money. So too much trust. You kind of get conditioned that way by the public schools, but it turns people into chumps. It's important to realize that some people don't like you, and the people who don't like you might do nasty things to you, so the smart move is avoid them as much as you can. That's important to know, and a lot of people don't know that. Uh, money skills. You got to have some money skills. You got to have some way to make money because life is rough if you don't have money. Uh, so whatever that is for you as an individual, but the, the, the relevance of it is I think a lot more effort should be put on that when a person's young. I think, you know, high school kids should be taught how do you start a business? How do you pay taxes? How do you finance a car, finance a house, finance a marriage and all this stuff because finance college because they don't know hardly anything about money. And I was quite naive about it. You know, I just figured my dad's a doctor. He makes lots of money. And, uh, you know, I'll probably be, you know, either a wrestling coach is when I was young is what I thought I was going to be. But later on, I thought I was going to be a doctor. I knew it eventually. And I just assumed, well, I'm like twice as smart as my dad. I'll make twice as much money. I didn't, which was very stupid on my part. But my dad was a real poor guy. He grew up on a dirt floor in Ireland. My mother grew up on a dirt floor in a barn in Puerto Rico. So they really didn't know anything about big time money other than my, fa my father just started making the money. But he didn't know anything about starting a business and all this other stuff. So I, I was just oblivious to it. And don't get me wrong, I did quite well, but it would have done a lot better and a lot easier if I had been more aware of it. Study skills. Yeah, I just want to learn to study skills so you can learn stuff faster. You're going to have to learn a ton of stuff. Why not learn it faster and remember it better? Having a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose makes you kind of strong. What I mean by that is, for example, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a really good wrestler. So that made me behave. I wouldn't want to go out at night because if I didn't sleep, I'd be weak the next day. I couldn't wrestle. I wouldn't want to drink alcohol because if I drank alcohol... I wouldn't be able to wrestle well the next day. So that sense of purpose kept me out of a lot of silly behavior. Um, and it gives you energy. Because a lot of times, too, like I said, tons of people got an IQ as high as mine. But I noticed most of them don't have any energy. By the time they're done working and you know, fulfilling their obligations to their family, most of them don't have much energy left over hardly at all. But because I had this bigger sense of purpose, you know, that someday I was going to be a great doctor scholar and uh, do something really great in medicine or science, that energized me in a very big way. And also I had the Alfred Adler inferiority pr uh, principle whereby I was really sad that I blamed it on myself for getting re-injured and screwing up my athletic career. So I wanted to try to not screw up my medical career. And I kind of thought too that it was going to make my whole social life and everything else better. And it hasn't done that as much as I would have hoped, but it's still, it's better than nothing. It gives me something to do. Okay, um, religion. Religion increases optimi optimism and resilience and adds meaning to life because I've just seen so many atheists do very poorly uh, from becoming drug addicts, alcoholics, dropping out of college, dropping out of grad school, increased rates. Uh, this uh, word here, Sui, you know what side. Uh, so uh, basically, this is sort of like the body's defense system. So the, the nice thing about it is, you know, Lots of this, it's not genetic, it's something you develop. Some of it's genetic, of course, but a lot of it is something you develop and you maintain. So, you know, young people should taught, be taught this at a younger age. This should be what's taught in high school health class rather than putting bananas on condoms to help kids, you know, prepare for life. Anyways, hope it's helpful.